welcome to infinity dear friends we are meditating and we are learning about uh, the life and the journey spiritual journey of different masters so we have upali upasana today joining us and she is a budding psychologist transpersonal psychology and quantum science enthusiast she is a writer she is a narrator she is a seeker and she is an enabler at paima india yeah <laughs> so a lot of things to learn from her to hear about her experiences and her journey we are very excited thank you for joining us ma'am thank you so much i'm surprised where that intro you got because i did not give that <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice but thank you so much for inviting me yeah so as i was saying it is more of an interactive session and we would like to know you uh your personal journey your spiritual journey uh and your experiences so how when when did you come into meditation or when did you start meditation was your family okay. already into spirituality or okay okay all right um so it began in 2011 um mm-hmm. when i was 11 years of age um so that's when it all started um so the story goes like um, so one of our neighbors um uh, i'll uh, also name them the shrinivas sir and nagalakshmi ma'am they were our neighbors back then and uh, we were going through a lot of uh, family dynamics my dad was shifting abroad for work and we were here in delhi so a lot of emotional distress was there so they kind of told my mom that uh, you can try meditating uh, it might help you so she started meditating i was very skeptical about meditation i'm like what is this? like just closing your eyes and sitting there doing nothing i'm like i couldn't wrap my head around the fact that what is meditation so she said that uh, you can try i won't force you but you can try it's your choice um but 11 years of age you really you know don't know much about what is happening peak teenage like you're just like no entering that teenage phase and uh, new new things is happening in your life attraction is happening a lot of things is happening so she just started meditating in the house and um me and my sister saw and then we gave it a try and then in the night we used to meditate it became like a mandate after that that you should meditate and that's how it's all started and i was still skeptical for good Three years. What is this? Um, I was not ready to accept uh, the entire spirituality, religiosity aspect angle of life. Um, so and then in class eight, uh, all of my friends started getting marks. Uh, you know, and uh, they got like trophies and marks and all of those things in academics. And I was like, okay, now I want this. so and then mom said that okay fine uh, if you meditate your concentration will go up if you meditate your focus will go up so you can study more and you can get your marks so that was like the trigger point ki okay fine now i want marks so i will meditate and then i started meditating very very seriously uh, every day in the night every day while before studying after studying i used to meditate little like not much like not for hours just 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes at max and uh, and my concentration went up like it went from 45 minutes to 3 hours um in one sitting and that's how the reward was that i got trophies i got trophies in school 8th 9th standard 10th standard 11th standard so i was like fine i'm one of the toppers i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm doing academically great so that was the adrenaline rush that i got and that's what motivated me more to be in the in meditation i could sit for hours if you want to make me do anything i could i would do anything my memory was excellent so all of those things were like magic for me there was like miracles for me at that point of time how did that just happen i was because as a kid i would open my book close my book because nothing is interesting after meditating what happened like during meditation what happened is i could fi- I, i would like sit with those books find meaning in those chapters and just like simple biology physics chemistry uh, mathematics i used to hate mathematics but 
the moment I started meditating seriously, uh, I could give those sums and solutions a lot of time. Um, I loved physics as a subject because that would make me think more. So I just I just became very 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 academic at that point of time. I and I I think that the interest developed because I used to sit more with my books and you know all of those things. So that's how it started. Uh, we were also non vegetarians. We are from Odisha, so um, a lot of people eat a lot all sorts of food there. But um, I was very reluctant to eat non veg from very beginning in my childhood, uh, because I didn't like the idea of killing some something or some animal and eating it for yourself. That's like the highest level of selfishness one can do. But my family used to eat, but uh, I would I would still resist, but they won't listen. But after all of them started meditating in 2011, so one person started and everybody else just picked up the chain. My dad started meditating, I started meditating, my sister started meditating. And they just took a decision that we will not eat non -witch. So that was like the happiest day of my life. I'm like, I don't know what meditation will do, but I am happy that no one is, no one is getting killed. That's, that's all I was happy about the moment I started meditating and my family started meditating. So that's how it began. That's wonderful. Yeah. Starting meditation at a young age is amazing. So did you ever feel different from kids of your age? Other kids of your age? I mean, not very different. I mean, I would feel the same things. I would still feel academic pressure. I would still feel attraction towards the opposite gender. I would still feel jealousy. I would still feel, oh, that person has this thing. I don't have this. Why don't I have this? I would still have issues with my mom. Why are you not letting me go out to and to meet my friends? Why am I not allowed to go to parties? Um, but I also with with meditation gave me a lot of patience. So even if something would not happen or something would not go my way, I would get irritated at the beginning. But eventually, I would accept it pace myself down and be okay with it. So I think that stability was different from other people. When, when teenagers were getting irritated, I was not very irritated. I would not get angry that easily. Um, to make me angry, one has to maybe kill somebody. Then I would be angry. That, that's my tolerance level for anger. But uh, in that way, those temper tantrums, I didn't have much in my teenage. But other than that, uh, it was nice. So... It didn't, it was not like because I did meditation, so I would not feel anything. I would feel it, go through it, but I, it would also give me an alternative to be calmer and be patient. So that's how it was. Yeah, take control of your emotions, right? More, yeah, more, regulate more. In control. more yeah. yeah, correct. More in control, more regulate. So that was the best highlight of my teenage that even if I'm angry at somebody or I am doing something else, I can still sit and study for hours so I could compartmentalize emotions and cognition you know all of those things separately like they won't interfere with each other and it's still like that uh, still my like now that I'm a little big <laughs> but it's still that compartmentalization is so solid that world can go either or other or like it can go anywhere but I can keep my emotions aside and do my stuff yeah, yeah. So you've been meditating for a while now. Has your meditation uh, evolved? How has it changed from the time you started and how do you see it now? Um, so I started as a kid who, didn't, who knew nothing about meditation. You know, in my introduction, you use so many big, big words, transpersonal, <laughs> quantum and all of those things. So as a kid, I didn't know any anything. I just... Like sit you sit close your eyes meditate but I had a lot of questions if people so what used to happen is Patrisa used to come and we used to all you know sit around him and uh, we used to ask like people used to ask him questions all sorts of questions and you know I saw this I saw that I saw I heard this I I know all of, I, I felt this I felt that but um, I couldn't feel anything I couldn't see anything I couldn't hear anything so I'm like why is that person feeling and hearing so much why is why I'm not I am not doing it. so you know all of these meditation experiences didn't happen to me in the beginning so I was like am I doing it wrong am I doing it right so and then sir said and a lot of other people's experiences when they share that sometimes 
emotions and there are no thoughts and nothing so from that state um to something happened in 2019 when i was in dhyan machakram uh, that happens in hyderabad kartal and that time i could really feel that i am present to at two places i am present within my body and i am present outside my body as well so and that happened during meditation so that way those experiences got deeper and deeper is what i i would feel i i still can't see i still can't hear i still can't feel but i but that that experience was such powerful that i could see myself inside and outside both of my body so that was a very very solid um experience is what i would say but more than what happens in meditation my experiences revolve what happened when i'm not meditating so as i said the as a teenage when you are um going through all these changes uh puberty hits everything hits um every emotion hits so 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 hard that you can't understand what to do so that time i think the state in which you are like the way you feel when you are med- when you are meditating so calm you are you have no worries you are just in the present moment that state continued even after i i like i opened my eyes and i'm not meditating that state used to continued for a very long time so that way i would say that while my eyes are closed and while my eyes are open the state won't change that much so as a child as a young adult or as a teenager i was way calmer so it's still like that people still ask me how can you be so calm i'm like i don't know <laughs> so that way it has evolved and within with when i'm meditating um uh, i started i don't know how related is that but i started dreaming and remembering my dreams a lot and uh, after after I, after i you know meditated for so many years now i can un- understand and identify why a dream is like that so my consciousness in my dream state became like very very or like uh, what to say aware or um i don't know how to say that it just i just felt i i know that i'm dreaming but i'm still there in my dream it's like being that i'm not dream. yeah being aware of the dream so that happened like that is a very recent experience and that happened i feel that happened due to meditation so much so much awareness has has been instilled that in dream state also i know that i'm dreaming i'm not controlling anything i know that i'm dreaming and i'm dreaming actively and i know why that dream is is there i can identify okay there is some internal in, inter, inter, internal conflict which is going on which is why those symbols are like that in my dream so that way the experiences were like um enhanced over the years it's wonderful yeah it's i i felt that Uh, meditating or the meditation practices keeps us more aware like as you were saying you you know you are dreaming but yeah. you still know what you're dreaming and uh, you remember all those that awareness in each moment what even even if you're not meditating you have that awareness uh, that is that is i i think everyone who has been meditating for a while they keep telling about this experience yeah <laughs> It so happens. in your introduction i did mention you are a psychologist so i think you are yeah <laughs> so my next question is uh, transpersonal psychology i am hearing that word for the first time but i yeah. was just googling it mm-hmm. and uh, i think it bridges the gap between spirituality and, and psychology um, your psychology so yeah. um, how how did how did that help in your spiritual journey or what was the impact of that okay so um psychology came very late in my life like i was aiming to become a doctor like a full medical practitioner and uh, after 12th standard in my gap year i would uh, i started the inclination towards psychology began there so when i started meditating after a couple of years uh, i started reading a lot of books um, my mentor dr s ranjan he recommended a lot of books to read and he said and sir also said that there is you can't 
uh, ask question and get your answers like that nobody will give you those you need to read you need to contemplate you need to understand you need to spend time with yourself and that's that's the only way you can find your answers from my childhood i have been asking one two three questions very prominently to my grandfather and my mom why am i here why are we all are here why this exists what happens beyond earth what happens beyond this galaxy what what is god what is deity so all of those questions were there from this childhood teenage everything got wiped out when i started meditating again every question came back and the closest answer i could find that time was through psychology the study of the mind or study of the psyche or whatever we can call that so in 12th standard when i took psychology as a subject it was very very interesting for me i just started like what is mind and what is uh, memory what is cognition start with that and i i i was aiming to be and that that's why i wanted to be a psychiatrist uh, psychiatrist uh, i'm like i want to be in the medical field but i want to become a psychiatrist because why people think differently why people behave differently why people have different experiences why people react differently to the same experience so all of those questions were just around me and um all the books that i read i i read a lot of jo jo dispenza books i read a lot of uh, yogi um himalayan yogi books um so all of those things and all of those you know conversations in my house about mind body soul connect and you know there's an afterlife and then an author called mike uh, newton came into picture and then brian weiss came into picture so all of those books sort of like uh, made me question a lot what happens after life but i i also understood that those the, to understand these concept one has to know that there is something beyond the body that there is something goes beyond the body and that bridge was between body and the soul was the mind so that is when i became very interested in psychology and i started i pursued it as a career um but the question about so all of these questions that i was seeking got answered through transpersonal psychology which is essentially a sub discipline of psychology so there all of these existential questions were there uh, all of these researchers were there all of these uh, uh, you know uh, people from other other fields used to um, write books on it so there it sort of um, got i start getting those answers but in my own practice i would say that it gave me vocabulary the only thing that psychology has given is given me vocabulary to understand my own self understand others and understand those questions that i have every other thing is explained by spirituality is it's, it's like you can feel it but you don't know how to say it and transpersonal psychologists give you those words to say uh for me it was like that so if i have to say you know i had these i had this out of body experience i had this you know all of those experiences or whatever so it just gave me vocabulary and made me understand if something happens to you in meditation or you know all of those trance states this is how you can explain what is happening inside your body and your mind so that field of psychology um helped me understand all of these concepts so i just keep it to there it's not a very i just like reading about it um but most of my research work happens in the field of social psychology um why people are like that if if they are like that is what i'm trying to understand right now so but it did help me understand why people experience different things why people have different opinions why different different people have different intensity of experiences um why people are different is what um psychology helped me understand and spirituality gave me the acceptance that yes people are different and you have to accept them as they are so all of these principles happened through spiritual books but their application at a very mass level at a very community level i think psychology helped me doing that and that's how um, i evolved and that's how i started doing research and that's what i want to bridge essentially is that there is a bridge between psychology and spirituality you can start with psychology and you'll end up in spirituality for sure there is no other way it is going because it, it can't happen the more the where psychology stops is what what happens beyond mind and spirituality starts by saying there is something beyond mind so that is a linear pathway <laughs> 
so that's yeah. how it's it helped me that's that's what i was thinking like science and spirituality we always think they're different but it's a beautiful way they yeah. they merge together and they they hand in hand they help each other right like yeah. how, how we learn about the science of spirituality and some of the questions we have in the like scientific questions it's beautifully explained by our spiritual experiences exactly all yeah. of the energy concept that happens with people that uh, when people say that you know what i went into this trance state because this music was playing or something was playing it is all a play of frequency uh, when we say that we are sitting in a collective meditative state and i just felt so much energy and i just felt this you know i just got connected to something it's resonance so yeah. all of these principles are there in the world of physics and the world of quantum science that people in people who are practicing um, spirituality experience so there is an explanation it's just you need to go out and read and you know and make yourself acquainted with all of those things because or maybe you don't want to like i've met so many people that experience so many things they explain it very beautifully but they don't want to understand what happens beyond that but there are people who are very logical like me who are very okay like me that they want reasons for everything and we just go ahead and just read it and it is there it is all energy quantum science ex- beautifully ex- uh, explains parallel reality um you know um resonance frequency uh, energy everything is energy everything is a wave everything everything changes when they you know attune themselves to another frequency emotions are ex- explained very beautifully through vibrations so and we all are essentially energy beings which is already an established fact and that's where spirituality takes starts from that we you all are energy beings and you all are souls so so yeah that that's that's how my interest got because i'm this so logical mind that it needs answer is why you know in the field of quantum science i just start reading yeah that that brings me to the next question actually <laughs> like a uh, transpersonal psychology and quantum yeah. science it sounds very uh, big. Mm-hmm. very big words but when you when you're helping others into meditation how do you break it down and how do you simplify it for them to understand i just don't use these big big words there's no need to use these big big words you can so if i have to if i have to tell somebody that um you know you have to um there is an out of body experience that happens for for a reason and people are sharing it there in in sessions and one person walks up to me and um, they ask me okay fine what is this out of body experience i don't understand um i just tell them that do you feel that you are just inside your body or you are outside also he's like no i think i'm omnipresent i'm there everywhere i think that's all so it's it's that simple uh, if somebody asks that okay fine what is this the entire concept of energy so is this like ki um can you see a sun ray no can you feel air can you see air no it just you can just feel it mm-hmm. do you feel that you are something which is beyond this body and they say yes i'm like that's it if you can feel something if you can you know uh, experience the presence of something that's it that's essentially what energy is and if so, that something takes form and the easiest example is to explain people why water how water shapes and you know um, at different temperatures at different um, uh, containers it just takes the shape of the form and that's the easiest way to demonstrate how energy um, you know uh, shifts and how energy takes different forms or how energy vibrates at different frequencies the easiest way is to explain it to by a water which, which people can see and if nothing is working if not if nobody is able to understand anything just make them sit into meditation that's all you experience i don't want to open my mouth you experience and you tell me what you experience that's all that's the easiest way demonstration just just sit if today if somebody says why are you so calm i say please meditate for 41 days and you'll get your answer that's 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 it if somebody asks me that why you know wh- why do you have so many questions i say please meditate for 41 days and you'll know the answer because that shift in awareness will only happen once you experience it nobody can explain you why the shift in aw- awareness happens you need to sit with yourself and go through those life experiences to understand what is happening in your life 
for that you need patience and awareness which will happen by meditation so and recently there was one very interesting question that you know people, one person asked me was that why do you tell uh, whenever you have thoughts come back to your breath and observe your breath why are we just observing our breath and nothing else so i was also contemplating on that thought and like why just the breath why not anything else and then i then there's one very simple principle in psychology is that mind will think it it will think that is the sole purpose of the mind anything you associate with the mind it will think but breath does not have a quality it does not have a form it does not have any information so the mind does not have anything to contemplate if the awareness is on the breath essentially the mind is still at work the mind is still at work because the mind is with your breath that awareness is what it's a cognition right that's where my that's coming from the mind but your breath does not have a quality what will it think that's how the mind is cal- calmer that's how that's how you go from the beta state which is like so much you know frequency vibration it just go is like this and it just comes into that alpha state that's what quantum science says it what science says but what is essentially happening is that your breath has no quality that's why the mind is calmer that's how the cognitive activity of the mind is reduced because it has nothing to think it has nothing to contemplate it has nothing to focus upon just be aware with your breath so unless and until people experience it no science can make them understand that's how so with the spiritual background and your scientific uh, researches or studies how do you see your own personal uh, meditation or your spiritual growth uh, how has mm. it changed or what has it uh, helped each other like your spiritual journey might have helped you in your researches or studies and yeah. vice versa right vice how versa. did i think i just became uh, more curious uh, as i as i i started this journey and now my entire life uh, revolves around it so i just became more and more curious about everything it it gave me a very scientific mindset because um i would i would i wouldn't just say it is just meditation it is also sachin sangatya how i have interacted with people how i have interacted with sir how i impra- interacted with a lot of other meditators is um there is an when, whenever i sit with other people there is a um feeling or there is there is a, a need or a want to experiment with a lot of things because um unless that the mindset is there unless and until i do it i won't agree mm. unless and until i do it i won't believe also i have to do it so that experimentation quality i felt i i feel is there from the childhood that i i think i was i had that innate trait but it was enhanced with meditation with interactive meditators with interacting with my family with interacting with patri sir or with interacting with an uh, experts or sessions is that i became very curious i have to do it if i want to know something you can't just come and tell me do this and i will know that is not going to happen <laughs> i have to do it so i think that curiosity and that um experimentation uh, experimenting nature and to experience everything and then sort of believe helped me in my research because there you really need to have a very open mind towards things um and vice versa because my research gave me answers when i, when I say yes. research essentially studying and academic research and other things in topic of interests um that's how it helped me but other than that as a person meditation helped me speak this is not how i used to speak i used to be very conscious i used to be very like searching words um i i was i was not able to look into other people's eyes and speak i was very low in confidence so i think the more i started having a curious mindset and the more i started exper- experimenting i want to experiment i want to express um sitting with other people and at least sharing your experience i think from there i started becoming more and more confident and more and more expressive uh, in terms of my feelings as well because as a child i was like if something happens i lock myself in the room cry that is not happening anymore i tell people okay fine this is what is hurting me 
even to my mother i i would i today only i told her please stop this it's hurting me <laughs> so i became more and more expressive because unless and until i express the other person won't won't know what is bothering so i think that also happened simultaneously with the academic uh, stuff which was which meditation spirituality was giving me as a person i started evolving that's nice like i think that inquisit nature of yours nature. has helped both both yeah ways, it you, did help yeah it did help it because did. you were saying you had questions from your childhood and that they, got uh-huh. answered <laughs> Yeah. I mean I remember this incident so I there, there there used to be puja room in my house when I I was smaller mm-hmm. and there is like the DT okay so there is this Ram uh, Lakshman and uh, Sita and then I was and Hanuman ji so I would say can I take your gada please and my mom used to my grandfather used to say why are you asking for that gada because I'm like they're friends only no I'll just take the gada and give back or I'll take the dhanush and I'll give back so that mindset was never there from the beginning from the childhood i'm like these are my friends these are and i i used to love those stories i still love those stories there's so much learning from those stories and somehow i still see them friends and characters and such interesting life lessons more than a religious book more than religious figures and religious books i feel so much knowledge is there from the very beginning so people who believe in past lives i would say that maybe that 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 learning and that that came from my past life that that specific characteristic in in me came from my past life so that's how it was wonderful <laughs> yeah, so you uh, i think you are a volunteer with paima uh, india so how did you yeah. come into paima i was in delhi and i'm i'm still in delhi um in 2018 or 19 i met a bunch of youngsters um before that i used to meditate i used to be at home you know study and all of those things but 2018 19 was the time when i started attending pssm events essentially mm-hmm. uh, in delhi and that's where i met a bunch of people uh, alekhya amulya sai all of those people there and uh, they they also my mom used to attend a lot of events and every time my mom used to go there they were like where is your daughter is she still studying has she finished her dig- like schooling and stuff and then that time um, we used to do social experiments like we used to go in the parks and we used to make people meditate we used to distribute pamphlets and make people meditate and i started doing that with my mom because my mom said no you have to come out of the house and do this so there i met them and uh, they took me for a social experiment with themselves uh, all of those people from there little by little i started like volunteering in those social experiments going god giving pamphlets attending rallies um and then after that covid hit and we went full online so because the friend circle was built uh, we start we started brainstorming of how to take sessions how to reach out to people how to spread meditation online from there um i met um uh, a lot of other paima people um here uh, in hyderabad and uh, dmc happened in 2019 so i went to dmc and there i met a lot of youngsters and um, after a year um, it just came into a flow after a year i started um, taking small small started sharing my experience first and then slowly slowly taking workshops and within paima we used to take a 21 day meditation uh, program so in that one day i would take a workshop so from there i think from being a volunteer from being an observer then i became a volunteer then i started exp- expressing my experiences and when i when i thought and other people thought that i think i can take a session i started taking sessions uh within paima and then we started taking sessions uh, outside paima whereas in schools and colleges we used to go and um teach meditation and talk about energy and soul science and all of those things and um I, I and because i was a youngster and i was free at that time in 2019 uh, and patrisa used to travel a lot in the entire india so whenever he used to come to north india um, i remember taking a entire punjab trip with him because they wanted few youngsters from paima they wanted to take few young, youngsters with sir because sir was visiting a lot of schools so there i went every time he used to go somewhere And then if he would see that there are a lot of youngsters and i was one one youngster in this in the team he would call and say come share your experience so that 
that was like the the training which happened how to share your experience and um what to share how much to share all of those you know little little uh, uh, nuances of experience sharing came from that entire 15 20 day punjab trip and then started uh, and still i'm volunteering with paima every time there's a event happening in rishikesh uttarakhand uh, mahayog dhyan po man so tomorrow we are leaving uh mm-hmm. for that event and uh, the entire registration is in the hand of youngsters uh so that's how by little by little every event every session you just need to show up that's all work is there you need to show up i think that mindset now is solidified in me beautiful how was your experience uh, like meeting patriji and uh, traveling 15 days yes, with sir. him <laughs> I met Patri sir way back in 2014 first and I did not like him. <laughs> I did not I'm like why is this person sitting there and all all the people are crying in front of him. I couldn't understand why are people there why are people crying why are people asking you questions what is happening and you and that time I used to learn Carnatic music. So I was called to my my guru's house my music guru's house so, Nagarshan ma'am she was my, she's my Carnatic music guru and sir was visiting her house. they that i have just woken up from sleep and pe- my mom said come 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 we have to sing and i just sat there i sang and then uh, sir said come sit and then the moment i sat beside him i started crying and i am like what is happening why i, I am crying why why is the what is this person and i couldn't understand what is happening and after that a lot of other meetings that i had with sir i have cried i have just cried so my question my first question was why am i crying if i'm meeting this person what is happening and then i understood the entire concept of energy and how um, that frequency matches and how you sort of uh, crying is a way of outlet of all of those stuck emotions and stuck energy blocks and everything so that process was happening so that was there and after that i think when in punjab when it happened in 2019 uh um it was it is it has always been a very silent meeting it was not very talkative i was i'm not a very talkative person so it was a silent meeting i used to have questions i i had one question about my career where i asked sir um what this is where i'm stuck at what should i do he didn't give me an answer he just said what do you want to do so i just said i want to study mind brain behavior and everything like that it's like why are you doing medical then in 2019 three times he met me and three times he asked what are you doing in life i'm saying i'm i'm studying for medical entrance exam is like why are you becoming a doctor what is the meaning of becoming a doctor what do you want to do so i, I was very stuck i want to study medical i want to become a doctor i was stuck it's like fine you do you will like, experience yourself and then you come back and then in 2019 i met him i said i don't want to become a doctor i want to be a psychologist he said okay go do it um and he just because he just asked me one question if you want to study mind brain behavior why are you waiting for 5 years to complete a medical degree and then study it why is it not happening right now whatever you want to do that one statement stuck in my head whatever you want to do do it right now there has to be some action in the present you can't wait for years to do it uh, it will never happen so i think that thing and then the entire punjab trip was mostly me sharing my experience and just being there i mean just observing him how he cooks how he uh, talks to people how he has also time for himself um, how he manages everything all of those things were i think more observational based and at the end i had this conversation with him which was uh, which will just still remember and uh, every time there is some every time he come every time he used to come into delhi uh all of us youngsters would meet him and uh, i used to just uh, i used to just tell him this that you know what sir we did this session we took this class and everything is like that everything is happening is it happening okay you say yeah go and get go baba do so i think he never questioned what i'm doing but he also didn't he also didn't qu- encourage but he wanted us all of us youngsters to do what we really want to do and he just put that trigger think at least what you're doing so i think that learning was there in all of my meets with him and obviously the punjab one <laughs> so being a volunteer right uh, for the youngsters benefit how do you think 
such volunteering uh, work you are doing or others in paima are doing mm. how does it help in your own spiritual growth or does it help of course i mean i'm just trying to make it shorter because it's so much um i think uh, first is that uh, the community that one gets um when you start sharing uh, you know uh, telling other people about meditation start uh, you know building that community you get an immediate support group a very safe space nobody like minded people nobody, right yeah like minded people so that community is what paima is essentially and whether uh, i am t- telling them something or they telling me something it is just it's just an information exchange that is all nobody is superior nobody is inferior it is just an information exchange um, it is all like minded people so i think that support group is what paima gives you very immediately and secondly you have a mass movement where youngsters are telling youngsters you should meditate it's like for the youth by the youth because youngsters of today won't listen to somebody who is 50 years older to him coming and saying you should meditate because like you don't know what i'm going through simple question is you don't know what i'm going through but if a youngster tells a youngster you should meditate like okay fine i think something relatable is there just the age factor or the experience factor so or every time i try is that we should have a lot of youngsters who are meditating who should be in every event who should be everywhere so that more youngsters who are going through who have gone through similar experiences or going through similar experiences at least try and meditate and what it gives me in return it just give me a lot of satisfaction and happiness that's all it's a very selfish need that if i am telling my experience then maybe that person at that time had a need to hear that experience the same thing with me if somebody is telling their experience to me i just find it so relatable that it just reinforces me to do more meditation it just keeps me motivated so having that community and telling other people about meditate to meditation keeps me motivated to do meditate meditation so it is like a spiral chain of <laughs> yeah. yeah it is a dual effect tell about meditation i want to the i because the moment i start taking less sessions or i start going out more for social experiments or go out or do less meditation i feel a very, i feel a lot of disconnect again i'll go back and do social experiments do more meditation take more sessions so it just keeps you in that um energy level is what i would say so to maintain that i would say that the entire of paima all the youngsters helped help help me a lot yeah and i feel like for youngsters rather than parents telling them or older adults telling them to meditate i yeah. i feel youngsters of or the same age group and they keep talking about meditation and their experiences it might be relatable to them otherwise they think yeah. it's for older people it's not for us we are that's so young what, there's so many things Yeah. that's what so that's why when people hear that i've been meditating for close to a decade they're like so you are 11 you are meditating i'm like yeah so and mm. my sister is meditating start meditating when she was 4 wow. so she was like teeny tiny when she started meditating so when she shares her experience it's altogether different because her entire childhood has gone while she was meditating and she was into and she started reading before me so mm. i'm like that her experiences are out of the level like she will just give one word statements and that would mean so much that would uh, you know say a lot so i think when people hear her experiences they're like oh we should then make our you know uh, yes, children do merit kids meditate from the beginning and uh, i also encourage her please share your experience because the earlier you start the earlier the the better it is so i think that's when then parents don't have to do that nagging behind the kids just just make them meet somebody who meditate that's all <laughs> yeah so being uh, uh like you're spreading meditation and you're learning about all this science behind the spirituality and you are seeking your own um, spiritual growth how do you balance all these things <laughs> um I won't say hundred percent is there balance. I'm still learning how to balance. 
but um i i feel that i started enjoying what i am doing um whether it is study or it is volunteering or it is doing a research or it is going out with friends or it is going out with family um if i'm doing something i'll not think about the other thing if i'm studying i'll not think about family if i'm with family i'll not think about studying if i'm volunteering college doesn't exist for me if i'm if i'm in college then nothing else exists for me so i feel that again meditation gave me clarity of um compartmentalizing of what i'm doing i will not mix and match i try my best not to mix and match um if i'm with my friends um uh, that also something uh, that is another episode altogether because it it taught me how to make friends also um how to choose people to talk to because if you talk to everybody then you're just wasting energy if you talk to like minded people you're not wasting energy or utilizing your energy you have that something productive is coming out of it or at least it productive is you getting happiness you're not going to the drama you're not going to back bitching all of those things so balance came from compartmentalizing compartmentalizing where i am and what i'm doing and also choosing to be with the right set of people sometimes i fail in that also but at least there's no judgment but if i see that a lot of energy drain is happening i would just refrain from doing those things um and for example right now my college is going on i'm finishing my masters degree and it's the last um, last few months of my degree mm-hmm. and uh, i had to attend my dkk so i took an off from my college a weeks off so i know that i need to attend an event where i really want to volunteer i really want to be there be present in that event so everything else was planned before every viva was planned before every uh, college work was planned before i didn't take any holidays so that i can make up for this holiday so i feel that that drive to compartmentalize and that drive to choose and set your priority is how balancing is happening for me right now people also complain that you know you are you are you you're planning too much uh, you know uh, you are very rigid in your planning you are not flexible in your planning but i also feel that because i know what is coming next um i tend to plan but balance is also teaching uh, that entire balancing is also being flexible if, because if something goes haywire you need to adapt and you know restart again so i think that restarting and adapting i'm learning now if something goes you know if there was some change in plan for example i was in delhi and i had to do a lot of things and i'm not able to do it in the moment right now and tomorrow i have to leave it's okay i can take another trip don't have to be so rigid in your planning so i think that is also something which i'm learning through experience i think just being aware of what i'm doing is creating that balance right now for me that's wonderful yeah key key point is being in that present moment right when you're yeah. studying you're studying you're not thinking yeah. about volunteering activity yeah, yeah. i'm still that, learning it it's not 100% i'm still yeah. in the process i mean everybody is somewhere learning somewhere there <laughs> yeah. yeah somewhere there <laughs> yeah because meditation came very late in my life so i oh. am still learning that <laughs> but you <laughs> being such a young uh, young adult and having been meditating from childhood i i'm pretty sure you have a pretty good balance <laughs> yeah mostly yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i i did mention in the I, and i missed talking about it um, you are a writer so ah uh, <laughs> would that... you want to share something about that <laughs> writer so i don't write books not an author um okay. i so it happened so that when a lot of awareness comes no you need to there has to be some letting out you mm. need to do something with that information there's so much information in my head so much organized information in my head somewhere it needs to go out so i started maintaining a diary that's how it started from because i was not very vocal about what i'm feeling so i just started writing and that writing i don't know how has this happened i still can't figure out there is there no memory also of how it happened it just started flowing into rhythm 
whatever i i used to write oh. starts going into rhythm i got a rhythm and i was able to express so i started writing poetry all of my poetry was about in the initial stage was about heartbreaks all of the poetry was about heartbreaks and love love <laughs> messages and whatever uh, a lot of romantic stuff i used to write but eventually uh, what happened is i i started as i started reading books my writing also improved from love it became writing about myself what i'm feeling what i'm doing it then it became about writing more about life um uh maybe an alternative perspective i i i write a lot about time i love writing about time um uh, most of it is in hindi uh, a very little in english because i feel i have more command over the hindi language in writing than english language english is still very professional for me um so that's how it started and it till now if i'm feeling something very intense um i'll sit with the thought and i'll just write and it is just a very it's a very 5 minute 10 minute process that's all it is i can't i still can't if you give me a topic i can't write only if i feel it i write it so it is still a very uh, no it's a, it's an outlet channel for me that's how i express Your expression Your it's expression. my expression yeah 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 um either i sing or i write <laughs> either of two so i think that them? is no not here nothing is published it's just okay. there um i've i i still write it because i i love love doing it nothing i i think i don't i don't think i want to do it professionally also this it's, it's so personal so i just write and i just put it on instagram that's all i do <laughs> uh, uh, but not publishing mm-hmm. beautiful yeah before yeah. we end the session um for someone who's starting their spiritual journey or a youngster what mm-hmm. is your message to them mm, i think start by having a question what do you want to do that's all i think that's that should be the starting question uh just what do you want to do that's all i think if and i'm 100% sure i don't know i'm claiming something but um that question will lead you to meditation somewhere because every time you want to think you need a very calmer mind and to have a calmer mind there is nothing more easier than meditation that will lead you to meditation so for me it was ulta i was into meditation first and then i started thinking but just think what you want to do and it will lead you to meditation is what i feel because if you think you will understand that you are here for something you are not just leading a life like that or the opposite way give it a try there's no harm in giving we give we give a try to a lot of things we give it give a try to let's go on a trip we give it a try to let's drink alcohol we give it a try to let's do something different maybe this is that one different that you can do so just give it a try i think for youngsters give it a try makes a lot of sense so either think and then do or just do and then think as simple as that It's a beautiful message. Yes, <laughs> it was wonderful talking to you, Upali. It was beautiful. For me, the two points I really it is uh, stuck with me is that how that uh, how beautifully explained that why we are using <laughs> breath for <laughs> meditation and the compartmentalization, like ah, how right. we can Correct. compartment be there what you're doing and don't think about the other things in your life. Yeah. That, That's beautiful right. way you explained it very nicely mm, and thank it's you. still it's still there <laughs> it was wonderful interacting thank you so much thank you so much us. hello 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 sirisha hello upali hi guys madam so it is beautiful uh, listening to you upali so young master you have so much so much talent so much into so you are a spiritual scientist so i won't take much time generally so so here in uh, dallas we are building a huge mega pyramid called omega pyramid the size of kartal pyramid so from that perspective i would like to so you are a sci- spiritual scientist 
I would like so from the pyramids perspective, I wanted to uh, I want you, I wanted you to do uh, research uh, on the pyramids and how they will help uh, the humanity. So, do you want to share anything on the pyramids? Um. So, I practically grew up with pyramids since the time we have been meditating. So, fifteen years with pyramids for sure. Um. As you said, experimentation with pyramids has been a very like you know it was very curious. Uh, I mean, not curious, like different, and it instilled a lot of curiosity. Um. I did a small experiment with the pyramid when I was in, I think, ninth or 10th standard, where I would keep the pyramid um, on my table and I would study. And I would not keep the pyramid and also I would study. So I think the, the intensity of energy with pyramid was different and without pyramid was also different. Um, so that is something I did when I was studying. And uh, then I visited the Karthal Pyramid and the Bangalore Pyramid and meditated in both the places. And um, it just acts as a catalyst to your meditation uh, experience. Um, it is effortless. It is seamless. Um, you feel a lot of energy. And when I say energy, you will just feel it. You, I cannot explain. I'm so sorry. You really need to feel. It will feel heavy. It will feel light. It will feel happiness. It will in all different forms. So I felt a lot of energy, especially in the Bangalore pyramid, uh, which is there, Maitre pyramid. So that is there. My house has four, two, two or four pyramids in one of our rooms. So that is that is our meditation room, which is also a pyramid meditation center. So. Every time somebody walks into our house, they say there is some difference in your house. There, I can feel different. And I don't feel it in everywhere place. And we take them to see the pyramid. See, there's a pyramid here and there's a crystal here. So I think that part has always been there. And I, I live in Bangalore now. So the moment I entered my PG room, I did not feel nice. I placed six pyramids, small copper pyramids there. And every time I enter my room, the room itself energizes energ energizes me. So that much energy a pyramid holds uh, within itself. And um, I think somewhere in my life, definitely I would experiment more and publish researches on pyramids because that is needed. Uh, we have a living example in Giza. How What is the extent of preservation capacity of a pyramid and storage capacity of a pyramid in terms of energy? Uh, people who meditate feel it and uh, it is there uh, even other people who don't meditate I've seen using pyramids uh, so it is very well established we just need a little of scientific literature to make it more prominent yeah, yeah. that's great madam so I was actually going to ask so you should go into whatever the, the, your research should go into print so that will that will so reach uh, much wider uh, let people so yeah thank you so much thank you so much for taking time to give answer to me thank you thank you sharma sir i was just wowed by the experiences shared um at such a young age how how much clarity and wisdom is flowing through so it was just amazing um my question is really around my daughter she's 21 so almost close to you know uh, your age and she has a taste of meditation um, but is not doing it regularly. I myself know about meditation, have had a few small experiences and, and see the benefits but that consistency isn't there. Um, so when you talk today all the sharing experiences it kind of energizes me but then two days later, right, you get into that routine of work, day-to-day -day things, and somehow this becomes a nice to have. So it's like in the back burner thing. So how do you guys keep that fire in you and it, it just keeps going? I, I know you've shared a couple of experiences where you saw through studies and all where you were able to achieve. So So you know the power of it. But to make it a priority in life, um, how do you bring that forth? 
it's just it's proportional to how much distressed you are. That's as easy as that. Because it's very easy, okay? If you don't eat one meal, you become so distressed. I'm so hungry. Uh -huh. So if you understand it through how much distress you are in emotionally, mentally, I think that itself is enough to give you that motivation to meditate. If you're not, then you're ignoring yourself. So the thought of keeping yourself in priority is enough motivation to do meditation regularly. This is what I will happen with me because I felt a lot of emotional distress throughout my teenage and that was a lot of motivation for me to meditate. Second is if you don't eat food one time a day, your stomach is hungry. If you don't meditate regularly, then you yourself hungry of your you yourself energy deprived, your body is energy deprived, your mind is energy deprived, your soul is energy deprived. That reminder is a constant practice. That reminder one has to give themselves. Um, just how nobody reminds you to eat food, nobody can remind you to meditate also. But you remind yourself to eat food because you feel the hunger. So if you have tasted meditation, you need to keep telling your mind to think about it. Repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. See, I... There's a very interesting study by uh, Joe Dispenza where he says that unless and until you tell your mind what to do, the mind will do whatever the mind wants to do, which is automatic in nature. So we need to first start speaking to the mind and remind itself that remind it that we need to meditate. And it's a constant practice. I don't know um, if it works, but it. I love waking up in the morning and writing my day, day's work and meditation is there mostly it is there and at the end of the day i will definitely tick mark what i have to do and I, I need to tick mark meditation i think that the simple practice that one can start with that you need to make meditation a part of it. how a meeting is there in your calendar meditation should be there in your calendar wow. it's a very okay. essential thing you can do or remind yourself how much distress you are in that's the that's like a trigger. That's like a solid trigger. When when pe when I say oh, no, I don't know. There's so much issue in my life, and still I'm you know not able to meditate. I'm like then that is not distressful for you. If you say that you have a lot of issues or a you know whatever is there in your life, and you want really want to meditate, it means that the issue is not bothering you enough, or maybe you are not seeing it enough. That's why you're saying that you know what I really want to meditate, but I'm not able to meditate. So maybe see what is there in you. Uh, you know you know that helps not just for uh, any uh, teenager I think it that answers everybody who wanted to do meditation but they are not regular enough to sit thank you thank you so much um, any questions friends please raise your hands or I don't see any questions uh, in the chat <laughs> so thank you Upali thank you so much for coming and sharing your uh, wisdom uh, your life journey thank you so much so friends thank you for joining today and uh, your energy and time uh, we it's very valuable and uh, we will see you later like uh, next week at the same time until then thank you thank you so much